Are solar panels a ripoff? I mean, I'm a real estate investor, and so I'm curious because guess what? Solar panels are definitely having their day in the sun, pun intended, they're definitely on the rise, but guess what? They cost a ton of money, they can save a ton of money, do they actually add value to the home? I gotta get to the bottom of this because with the number of houses I'm buying, or even just you and your own personal house, you might be wondering, are solar panels gonna increase the value? Or at the end of the day, are you gonna lose money on this thing? One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality, yeah. It's one, all, one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. Man, I'll tell you what, solar panels, if they're one thing, they're ugly. Like, you put them on your house and it's like, ooh, that curb appeal, pfft, down in the drain. But that's not what today's really about. Today it's about, are solar panels worth it? We are in a very cost conscientious society. Electricity is expensive. People are trying to figure out how much money they can save through panels. The government's got subsidies and at a state and federal level, they're kicking in costs for some of those. There might be some tax benefits. And as an investor that buys a lot of real estate, I'm just curious myself. And you yourself might be considering solar. Should we go solar? Our neighbor just went solar. Let's figure out whether this whole thing is a ripoff and a sham or something maybe real. And to get to the bottom of it, I brought in an expert that owns a solar company, Mr. Josh Jones. How are we doing, buddy? All right, check it out. I actually don't really have an opinion as far as whether you should or shouldn't put solar panels on your home. So we're gonna dive in and we're gonna start with some information that comes straight from Forbes. And it's based on this idea, is it really time to go green? Is everyone getting on the bandwagon? Over the past decade, the cost of solar power dropped below a dollar a kilowatt, making it one of the cheapest forms of electricity ever invented. More than 80% of home buyers say that energy efficient features are a priority for them. That's that's news for me. But that being said, the upfront cost of solar installation is still very high, averaging between $15,000 and $25,000 per home. So the question is, does the value from adding solar panels to your home end up really being worth the cost? Well, that's what we really have to find out. Is it going to give you a good ROI or not? Psst. ROI stands for return on investment. You would know that if you're a subscriber on my channel. If you're not, take care of that right now. So undoubtedly, there are definitely benefits to being energy efficient. There's definitely benefits to solar panels. And here's what some of them are, again, from Forbes. On average, solar panels add 4% to a home's value, which equates to, for example, $14,000 for a $350,000 house. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, I didn't know that. Like, if I buy a house and it has solar on it, that actually adds to the value of the home itself. Plus, the average U.S. customer saves about $1,600 a year by going solar. So, depending on roof size, sunlight exposure, local energy rates, and solar incentives, this can equate to savings between $35,000 and up to $90,000 over 25 years. As in, if you're planning on staying in this house for a long period of time, there's a lot of savings eventually that you'll catch up to. And there's definitely also, I think, the good vibes and the good feelings of, hey, I'm part of the team that is trying to go green, and that feels good. And since the Inflation Protection Act has been extended to 2034, the White House predicts 7.5 million more homeowners will take advantage of the 30% federal tax credit for the installation of residential solar panels during that period. In other words, the government is really big on going green right now and they have set a lot of money aside for millions more Americans to take advantage of this special federal tax credit. And I'm gonna tell you right now in terms of finance, there's a difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit and a tax credit has the power to save you a lot of money real quick let's talk about tax credit let's just say this is your lovely house miniaturized and for you to put uh, solar on it let's just say that it's gonna cost you thirty three thousand dollars well 30% of that comes to you as a tax credit so what is 30% it's approximately $10,000. Now, let's also say for a moment that this year in taxes, I'm going to owe $20,000 to the government. I get to take the credit of $10,000 and literally lower my, tax, my taxes by that exact amount. So now my taxes literally get cut in half because solar was the right decision for me, let's say. So far, solar is kind of smelling like money. 
but is it? Let's talk about some of the downside. There are some problems with like putting technology on the roof of your house. For example, solar panels are made with rare earth metals and expertly manufactured electronics. This makes them prone to supply chain bottlenecks, something which has increased the price of solar by 34% in recent years, according to Inside Climate News. Also, the highly technical nature of solar energy also means that you need trained professionals to get your home systems installed and running properly, and that can also add to the cost. So, there are some pros and cons to this game. It's like, okay, if I buy it, eventually it's going to financially make sense. There's also some tax credits that can help me in the immediate, uh, but it also has to be done the right way, and some of this stuff might actually break down. Maybe it's just something minor. <laughs> and there's also other factors to consider, and I'm actually going to come over to hear my friend Josh Jones. Buddy, how are we doing? I'm fantastic. Dude, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Josh, you own a company called Elite. Yes. And uh, basically you do installs around different parts of the country. Correct. So um, I want to get the real scoop on this and I want to bring up some of these factors and I'm kind of curious. First of all, I, I always like starting with the financial aspect guys, which is like, what is the finances in terms of ROI on the value of the house? But first I just want to start with this one, state and federal tax incentives. We've talked about the 30% tax credit for 30% of the cost that you're spending on solar. That tax credit is major, but do the states also kick something in? It depends on the state that you're in. There's some states that offer a ton of incentives and there's other ones that absolutely offer nothing. It specifically depends on the legislation of your state, depends on the politics, and depending on the state you're in, it could make a ton of sense to go solar. There's some where it probably makes no sense to go solar currently. By the way, you do a lot of install in Texas and that's a great place because solar really makes sense down there, true or false? Absolutely true. One of the biggest things that happened was, it was about a year ago, rates went up 70% in the course of a year. And suddenly all of the people where solar didn't make sense, it made sense because the economics just shifted. There's no state incentives in Texas, but the sun exposure that they get there makes it so it's just, it's a no brainer for most people. But on the other side, like you do a lot of installs in Connecticut and there the state kicks in quite a bit, right? Correct. So in Connecticut, it's, it doesn't really make sense from a sun exposure aspect and you've got trees everywhere. Um, lots of cloudy days. And so most people would automatically think, no, nah, let's, let's rule this state out. But because the rates of power there, it's double to about to be triple what the price is in a state like Texas, wow. the economics make a ton of sense. And then on top of that, you have incentives from the state, like there's net metering laws. So net metering laws are where basically what happens is the utility companies are required to pay you for the power that your system produces. And depending on what those laws are, it can be one to one, it can be one to two, um, meaning they're paying you for half of the power that you get. A state like Connecticut, it's a one to one ratio. And there's, there's a lot of states like that where it ends up making just really good financial sense. Um, other aspects of it are incentives. So currently in Connecticut, there's an incentive where they pay you so many cents per kilowatt hour that you produce above and beyond what, uh, what they're reimbursing you from the net metering. So that, that makes it the whole thing just a slam dunk. Yeah, so, so basically like no one can really decide if solar's for them until they really look into whatever your state plus federal looks like, because it really just varies from one place to the next. So it's, it's even further than that, it's state plus federal plus the utility company that you have within that state. Got it, awesome. Let, let's do this one right here, HOAs. Are there regulations like HOA, can they like get in the way of how solar goes down? It's another one that is state dependent. So there's some states where they basically say the HOA has no say and they can't control what you do with solar. There's other states where the HOA, I actually, I, I dealt with this in Utah where a customer wasn't able to put panels on the front of their house because the HOA said, no, nah, that looks ugly, so we're not gonna let it happen. Okay, well actually, can I lean in on that one? Because like, for me, I'm a little bit like, this whole curb appeal issue right there, I'm like, I actually, for the most part, I don't like the way solar looks on a house, right? Um, but then again, I don't live in normal sized houses anymore, but nonetheless, <laughs> right? So, like, what's your real honest feelings on that? So I, I agree. I actually agree and disagree. So let me, let me expound on that. So I have two houses with solar on it. One of them, it's a $2 million house, and the other is a $400,000 house. My $2 million house, it has a hip roof, which means it's, it's a triangle-shaped roof. And if you have a triangle-shaped roof that has rectangular panels on it, you have to do like 
a pyramid look. It, it doesn't look as good. It's not what I wanted on my roof. And so I didn't put it on the front. I put it on the sides of the house. Huh. My house in Connecticut that has a rectangular shaped roof. It's a cheaper house. Um, I put it on the front and the back. I think it looks fantastic. One of the things that's changed in recent years is the type of panel that you have. They used to have the bluish panels that had like the white grid lines in it, it looked like engineering paper. <laughs> um, I would never want that on my house. I think the look of it is ugly. What we've come out with in the last, realistically like three or four years has been a triple black panel where it's black on black on black. And it just gives this really clean look. And if you have a perfect rectangular shape on the front of the roof, rather than having it with, with chunks taken out, or there's, oh, there's one by my, my church here in Utah that it has, there's, it's even, and then there's one just dangler panel on there. And every time I look at that, I'm like, did they run out of money? Like why, why doesn't it have that extra panel there? And so making sure that you're working with a company and a designer that is very anal about aesthetics is going to make sure that you're going to have the best look, even if it's on the front of the house. All right. I got a couple more issues and then we're going to get to the bottom of, is it worth it? Is it not as a personal homeowner also as an investor, because I I'm developing a strong opinion on this. First of all, I want to show you the map, uh, red, hot, blue, snow monster. Like, does it make sense that you should do polar down, like, like a solar down in the, in, in the lower states where it's warmer and that it probably makes less sense up north. Like what's your take on that? Normally that's what would make sense. You would think it's based on the cost of electricity in those areas though, is what is more of a determining factor. So looking at the Northeast, the Northeast is it, it's the least sense to install solar up there. But because if you look at a state like Connecticut or Massachusetts, it's half and even more, I've seen two thirds of the cost is the delivery of the electricity just because of how janky their, their supply chain is and their pipelines are. Hmm. It ends up making more sense in those places than down in the South. Um, so solar. Yeah. So basically it just comes down to, um, it might be location, but it's more about programs, state programs and how it all works. So you can't reuse a generalization and know whether it really makes sense or not. Correct. Final question that I have for you, Josh, renting or owning, right? The whole idea of you can lease panels or you can buy panels. What makes more sense? So what I've recommended doing, and this is not financial advice, what I've recommended is if you own the panels, you get to claim all of the incentives. You get to claim the tax credit. You get to claim any of the state incentives. Whereas if you rent them or lease them, that all goes to the solar company oh, and wow. it's, it's in their best interest to do that. And they, so they generally want you to lease. They generally want you to lease. And, and one of the big things that happens is they also have an escalator on their, on their pricing. So it increases every single year. Hmm. Whereas if you own a system, so whether it's a cash purchase or a loan, it stays flat and it never increases. But the biggest thing, so if you're listening to Chris Crone and listening to his investment advice, you're going to do a, a loan and you're going to get 3%, 4% and you're going to be able to claim a tax credit that in some cases is worth tens of thousands of dollars. What I would do personally is I would take that tax credit and rather than applying it to the principal on the loan, I would pull that money out and take it and invest it somewhere do else. Do people do this? All the time. Wait, 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 wait. This just got way time. more interesting. You're telling me that someone says solar's right for me yep. and I'm going to get my tax credit and I'm going to take my savings and I'm going to invest the difference. Yes. Wow. That but, does sound kind of like me. But time value of money wise, you can take your tax credit out mm. year one. Yeah. And so what, what that means is your savings, normally if you get solar, it's, oh, I'm saving 50 bucks a month, hundred bucks a month. And it's like, awesome. That's great over time. But if instead you say, actually, I'm willing to pay more on my monthly payment, but I want a bunch of cash up front. You can keep your tax credit, yeah. see that as immediate savings and then turn that into investment dollars. Well, ironically, that is where we're going next because I'm now going to legitimately tell you where I stand when it comes to solar. I'm going to share with you what is that as a primary residence decision and where is that for the investor? Josh, thanks for being here today, buddy. Yeah. Appreciate you. you creating a lot of clarity for us. For me, everything comes down to ROI, return on investment. If I lay money out, what comes back to me and does it actually make sense? 
Check this out from the New York Times. Is it really worth it in their opinion? Since the cost to install a solar system is high, the investment only makes sense if either the house is relatively expensive, maybe like $500,000 or more, or the homeowner plans on living in the home long enough to make sure that they reap the benefits of it. You gotta ask yourself these two questions. Number one, can you afford the upfront cost? And number two, do you plan on living in the home long enough to benefit from the savings or from the utilities? And what this is, is about in your own financial world, is this going to save you money or is this going to cost you money? Because if you're a subscriber on my channel, guess what I'm here to do? I'm here to teach you how to invest money and grow it. And that means with the game of real estate, largest commodity we'll ever participate in, we have to make the smartest choices possible. Here's the real thing about solar that most people don't know. It's possible to get a 0% or a low percent interest loan, get the solar done on your house, and then immediately start saving money every single month after all the expenses are paid for. That in my world is called an infinite ROI. I make a choice and I'm financially better off every single month because of the choice that I made. Well, that's a version of investing, except here it's just a version of lower your expenses and save more money. And what do you do with the difference? Well, now I'm getting an infinite return on my solar by lowering my expenses. I can take the savings and also get an infinite ROI by pouring that money into other investments. Well, believe it or not, solar can help you save money. It can put money in your pocket. It can lower your expenses, or you can use it, like I just said, for infinite investing. Either way, it could be a key to the bigger puzzle in your financial life of how do you financially get ahead. I'm gonna tell you right now, there are a ton of people that have money in 401ks, IRAs, equity in their home. And at the end of the day, yes, can I lower my expenses $100 here, $500 here? But on the other hand, what can I do to grow my money to start making $100 here, making an extra $500 here? Because if you add that up, that can become thousands and then tens of thousands of dollars. And before you know it, you wake up, you're financially free. That's what I do, for example, with my real estate partners. In fact, there's a link below if you wanna learn about partnering with me. It's a bigger decision than the whole game of solar because it's not here just about saving money, it's your financial future. Where are you financially headed and are you feeling secure enough to know that the millions that you want for retirement are actually gonna be there? If not, learn about the kind of ROIs that I have a track record of producing on thousands of homes because we could partner up. I could do 100% of all of the work. You could be relatively passive and together we could win really big. Click the link and learn about partnering with me. So Chris, for the record, solar does improve the value of your home. And there are five other things that you can do that will also increase the value of your home. And if you wanna know what they are, click right here, watch this video, and let me show you how to build some rapid equity. Hi, Hi. <laughs> Do right. you have stuff like that in the middle? <laughs> just like record that and just like, <laughs> 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 